Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. This is a COPS deep dive or sort of an unconference for uh, COPS developers and maintainers. Uh, I am. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Justin Santa Barbara, Justin SB on GitHub and Slack. I am a COPS maintainer. I originally have uh, been involved in Kubernetes for a while, particularly on the AWS side, and I was one of the people that started the COPS project. Um, came out of the need for a better cube up script. That was a long time ago, obviously. I now work at Google and. Yeah, pretty active generally. I'm Mike Splain. Um, Mike Splain on GitHub, very original. Um, and uh, I've been using Kubernetes for about five years, uh, on and off for, for different projects. And uh, as my needs developed, I got into COPS and started COPS development. Um, and uh, I'm now an active maintainer of COPS, and I work at Sonos. Awesome. So we are going to, I have to learn how to use a Mac. Uh, <laughs> We, this is a maintainer session, so we're going to try to breeze through the slides fairly quickly. Um, the goal of the slides is basically to cover the questions that we expect that, you know, 80% of people will have and sort of get those out of the way and hopefully leave a ton of time for Q&A so we can really dig in deeper. Um, we're going to cover sort of the, the new release thing that we've been doing, etcd3, some of the work on CRDs, cluster API, add-ons, the bundles and operators, the conformance work, and the ongoing support for more and more clouds in COPS. So if you attended our session yesterday, some of this might sound familiar to you. Um, but as many of you know, we really try to make sure that our v0 releases are stable. Uh, that is one of our core competencies of COPS. Um, we want to make sure that uh, we purposefully release after Kubernetes releases, because we want things to be stable. Um, and you know, so we usually will wait until Kubernetes has a couple patch versions, dot two or dot three, um, before we really start pushing for, for our releases. Um, and, and we really just want to make sure that the whole ecosystem is ready, because we have to support multiple networking providers, and, you know, core DNS, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the consequence of that, which I'm sure everyone in this room is aware of, is that we were lagging further and further behind on the releases. I think we got up to I don't want to admit it, that looks like more than six months, but I must be misreading the scale uh, delay between uh, the Kubernetes release and um, the, the dot zero COPS release. Uh, thanks to our contributor, Peter, for, or Peter R, for putting this together. Um, the goal here is not to get to zero because of the this philosophy we just described, but we want to be much more under that 50 line, sort of in between 30 to 60 days, a month to two months behind, feels much more where we want to be. So how are we going to get there? Well, <laughs> since you asked, Jason, um, we've, uh, revisited our philosophy on all this. Um, so uh, users really like and trust that our releases are stable, right? Um, but we're going to start cutting alphas and betas quicker and earlier in the process. So when Kubernetes cuts a major release, we should be cutting an alpha almost simultaneously, right? So that you know, if you really want to try it, you can try it on some of your dev or test clusters, things like that. Um, and we want to make sure that you, know, you can promote it up through your clusters, and, and we'll do the same with some of ours. And that way, then, you know, when the community, we all feel like COPS is ready, we can cut the stable release still in the normal time frame that we aim for, but hopefully quicker than we have been recently. The problem with that is now we got to catch up, as you saw on that graph. Um, so uh, we've been adding, uh, we won't be adding a lot of new features in 113 and 114. 112, we already cut. Um, and, but lots and lots of features should land in 115. Um, that's what master represents now in the COPS project. Um, so our new motto is going to be to cut the branches and start the alpha and beta trains rolling as soon as possible. And, and we have done that. And you may have noticed a uh, much higher, Sorry. much higher uh, rate of cherry picks. Uh, there is a gorgeous spreadsheet in the sky that is tracking all these cherry picks. And uh, I have to give a big shout out to, to Mike and to Ryan Bonham, who together basically did most of the work on this spreadsheet to actually track and go through all these cherry picks. So anything that lands on master that is a, uh, a bug fix gets cherry picked to possibly all four of the active release branches right now. So um, as most of you may know, etcd2 support was deprecated in Kubernetes as of 1.14 or something like that. You guys can check that out yourselves. But we knew that we had to get everyone to etcd3 fast. Um, so um, we've set up etcd manager, uh, which is a project that, that um, the community has developed mostly under Justin. Um, and uh, 
you know, so we, we've used etcd manager to help our, our um, users, end users, move to etcd3. Um, so there uh, there have been some bug reports here and there, um, but um, we um, we're working through all those and uh, we're on track uh, for um, for 114, 113, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, the other one of the other big things we've been work one of the other big things we have been working on is uh, replacing the aggregated API server machinery that is in COPS and is sort of pretty complicated. If you ever tried to do a, a PR, I'm sure you've like grappled with that uh, code generation. Um, we're, we're switching to CRDs. Uh, they are uh, basically a, a, a better, simpler uh, approach. Um, it's where a lot of the effort is. A couple of years ago, the CRDs were, were lagging behind the support. Uh, the feature support of, of aggregated APIs. Um, that is no longer the case, and there is a big effort to uh, bring them to par and beyond. Um, from our point of view in, in COPS, as contributors and maintainers, it's uh, less and simpler code, many fewer dependencies, and those dependencies, in particular controller runtime, are, are actually intended to be a stable API. So uh, one of the reasons for that increasing delay is that with every release, we had to uh, vendor in a lot of the, K, the Kubernetes libraries and they were not necessarily stable APIs. And so we had to make a lot of changes. Hopefully that will be uh, easier going forwards. Um, a lot of the doc generation should be simplified, so the slightly complicated uh, doc pipeline will hopefully be much easier now. Um, and from the end, user, end user's perspective, if you want to install CRDs on your cluster, it is much easier to do than it is to install an aggregate API server. So generally all around a, a good thing, I think, that we are making good progress on. We are also working on adopting cluster API. Um, and so we'll be rolling out uh, machine, machine set, machine deployment. Um, we'll talk about how that's going to happen in a moment. Uh, but for the most part, machine groups, uh, uh, instance groups, excuse me, uh, will correlate to machine deployments. Um, so since, as we've discussed a little bit, uh, we kind of got ahead with some of the, um, the developments in COPS, um, we can now actually kind of um, shim in uh, some of uh, our types into the cluster API type. Um, and uh, we will be um, starting with just some additional non-master nodes uh, in existing clusters uh, and rolling on from there. Thank you. Um, there, is, there are some challenges with this. Uh, COPS instance groups are sort of much richer today than machine deployments are in the open source cluster API. You know, we've had a number of years of building up the functionality of, of COPS instance groups, which hasn't uh, necessarily, machine deployments haven't necessarily had the same amount of, of time and PRs against them. And so the approach we're taking is this one. When you create a COPS instance group, uh, there is a controller which goes and creates a machine deployment which backs that. Uh, the goal is that we get to a point where users can choose. Uh, you can either create an, an instance group, which sort of will have the full functionality, or and eventually we'll, machine deployments will catch up, or you can create a machine deployment if you are within the machine deployment area of, of functionality. Uh, the intention is that the same tooling, though, that works with cluster API, because that machine deployment is still there, will be able to work against the machine deployment, even though that machine deployment is still being managed by an instance group, as it were. And I guess we'll see if uh, that approach becomes widespread. Uh, it's still early days for cluster API, so it may be that this is something that people most will do. And I think we finally get COPS server at this point. So CRDs, COPS controller, cluster API, and we basically have this idea that uh, for anyone that's been watching COPS server wondering when it will ever land, I think we will finally uh, be able to get it, get it going. So you'll be able to, if you want to, uh, to have a Kubernetes cluster to manage other Kubernetes clusters, which we've been talking about for longer than I care to admit, probably years. <laughs> um, but uh, that should actually land this, this year. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> uh, so we're also uh, working on bundles support and operators. Uh, bundles, uh, currently we have a lot of COPS add-ons. Uh, the versions are baked into COPS itself. So uh, it, you know, if, if one of the CNI providers needs a critical patch or, or anything like that, um, yeah, users can kind of work around it. But in reality, we would have to cut a new version of COPS. Uh, so we're going to be abstracting that out. Uh, into bundles, uh, which allows for controlled releases of add-ons without doing a full release. Uh, operators, most of you are familiar with the, the paradigm. Um, bundles, we think of as the what. Operators, it's kind of the how. 
so operators are code allowing for health checks and complex sequences. Um, and we're going to be developing um, a lot of operators as a uh, sub project in SIG cluster lifecycle. And that brings us on nicely to this next sort of idea, which is that we are moving from a world where, you know, COPS was sort of its own project. And when you adopted COPS, everything that you, we had our own pieces for everything. And we had to maintain them all. And, uh, you know, if you were using pieces from the community, you probably weren't doing the same thing as COPS. We're moving from that world to a world where we are contributing to and leveraging uh, community components. So cluster API, if I can like, <laughs> add-on bundles and operators, CRDs and cube builder, etcd ADM is a community project. Node up is not yet. It's the last big piece, uh, and there may be some activity there. So we'll see if we can get to the full uh, world where effectively COPS becomes a thin shim on uh, community maintained pieces. We are um, also uh, conformant. Uh, and this is kind of funny because we never really like, we don't put it on the repo or anything like that because technically the, the conformance tests are part of the end-to-end -end suite within Kubernetes. Uh, but we now are actually conformant in the repo uh, and we have the badge there. We are tested against 110, 111, and 112, but we've always been conformant, uh, as many of you will know based on our tests. Um, so yeah, now, now we're on the list. We can use the Kubernetes trademark, which we technically we it. could not have used until yes. without this. So Woohoo. Exactly. And um, we are adding a lot of support for more clouds. Uh, AWS is, uh, as I'm sure you know, the most uh, reliable. Um, but hopefully, this pretty soon we should be able to get GCE support uh, from beta to stable. Uh, it's as, as I am now employed by Google, that is an important thing for me <laughs> to do. Um, we have some great contributors doing some wonderful work on OpenStack and on Ali Cloud. Uh, so special thanks to all of them. And there are some. Uh, clouds which probably could use a little bit of love right now. So DigitalOcean and, and vSphere, if you, are, if you know those clouds and would like to get involved, uh, getting involved in, in making those work better, that would be wonderful. Uh, there's also an opportunity on, those, on both of those to maybe prototype uh, deeper cluster API adoption. Uh, they're not necessarily as actively used. And so it, it could be if you wanted to get involved and take on a pretty meaty project, that would be a great place to, to start. Yeah, and all of those projects, they're all kind of feature flagged to the side, so it's actually a pretty low risk thing to start getting involved in, because you're probably just going to make it better, you know? Um, and so we also wanted to just say thank you to all of our contributors and, and all of you for coming out and, and working with us on COPS. Um, without you guys, like, COPS wouldn't be where it's at now. Um, we really, really li rely on the commu uh, community because, you know, none of us do this as our day job. Uh, this is kind of the tool that helps me do my day job, you know? Um, so uh, if you guys, if any of you are working on COPS uh, and have questions, uh, the COPS users Slack channel. Um, we also have a development channel. So if you have questions about working on PRs and whatnot, um, feel free to go there. Um, and we also have office hours uh, on odd weeks of the year, um, it, Fridays at noon on Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific, to 1800 uh, Central European time. Uh, or you can just use the QR code to go to that page in our docs, which will just describe it better for you. So um, feel free to join us. And Justin and I usually call in most weeks, except today. Today's SIG AWS? I don't know. Uh, tomorrow's. Tomorrow? Well, I don't know. Anyway, no, we're not doing today's it Today's Thursday anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. OK, good. We made it through in about 13 and a bit minutes, so that's pretty good, a little All bit right. faster than we thought. Uh, so we have plenty of time for questions. Hopefully, we covered off like the basics at that, at the la that level. We sort of level set and got everyone's uh, first questions out the way or prompted more questions and probably more likely. Um, but I don't know if over, over to people, what do people want to work on, get involved in? Do you have questions or feedback about COPS? Uh, what really should we be thinking about or working on? And if you wouldn't mind raising your hands, and I'll run over to make sure it gets on the recording mm -hmm. as well. Hi. Um, so at the moment when you install etcd, it gets deployed on top of the masters. Uh, have you have any plan of having a dedicated etcd instance group uh, for resilience or your performance? Uh, I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday. So thank you for bringing it up. Yes, I think it's a great idea. Um, we don't have plans for it. Um, I think it would work very well to support that as an option. Uh, we, we have this uh, role, and we have like masters and nodes, and we have bastions. So this could be a fourth role. Um, I, think, I think if you wanted to contribute that, that would be very, very welcome. Or you know, if you wanted to start, uh, it, there, there are many ways to contribute. And I think uh, starting a, an issue and saying, like, I think this would be cool, and 
uh, who else is interested and like how should it work and we can discuss it, flesh it out there. I think that would be very helpful and very welcome and it's, you know, it, it, we don't know about, like I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Uh, there is a, so it's wonderful to, to have that contribution. It's, uh, there is a technical challenge, potential technical challenge, which is the, the latency of crossing machines will be higher than today's configuration, where API server and etcd are always uh, talking on localhost. Um, but we can figure it out. It, it, should be an, it, should be, it could be an option. I don't know if we'd make change the default. And I think just to hit on that real quick, uh, Justin touched on one thing that I think is critical. A few people <laughs> talked to me yesterday about this, about like getting involved in contributing. Um, so just remember, when we say like we'd love to have your contribution, we're just saying that you know it better than we do in many of these cases, the thing you're trying to solve for. So, um, and, and don't just go open a PR with like, here's my giant code change. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, so open an issue, start communicating with us. That way we can help you make sure that it's done the right way and the best way for everyone, right? So just communication early on in your, in your thought process. We love, we love new ideas, we love new contributors. So open issues, Slack us, et cetera. Yeah, my rule of thumb for a, a PR is if you're, unhappy if you're told that it needs to be completely reworked, then probably it's uh, too big. But if, if, if it's the sort of thing where it's just like, I'm gonna throw it up there and like, it's a good way, it's a great way to show people concretely what you're talking about. So as long as you're prepared to throw it away, then by all means send a PR however big it is. But uh, if it's bigger than you would be happy to throw away, then probably best to start a discussion issue first. So, up front here. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. I was wondering how quickly bundles are coming, um, and if it's how quickly bundles are coming, because, I mean, right now we can surface some of the options for the, like the CNI plugins, so there is, we could do, we could work on that, or we could wait for bundles, so more or less, it's just a rough estimate. Yeah, I think there is a PR that is going, that is open, that is targeted 115, because the master branch, it is feature flagged still, um, which means that we will have to sort of double maintain the bundles for a while. We have the, the version of the manifest that's baked into the COPS binary itself, and we'll separately have the versions that are based on a YAML file that can be updated separately from a COPS release. That's not ideal, but it's an ideal way to introduce it. Uh, we then, in addition, have to add the support for patching. So a lot of people have sent a lot of great PRs to expose additional options in the bundle which aren't uh, to change the, the default, custom, the default uh, parameters. For example, to give more memory is a, is a common one. Uh, and we've sort of held off on that because of the idea that bundles and operators are gonna make this easier. Uh, until we get bundles and operators which support patches, it's not gonna be there. So it is, it is further off. And so I think we, we have softened our stance a little bit and have started merging those, um, uh, the PRs that are adding more options to the cluster spec in the meantime. Uh, I hope we'll get bundle support into 115 feature flagged. I hope we'll get it non-feature flagged in 116, but that is uh, open to discussion. And uh, operators, uh, we, uh, 116 feels like we might get our first operator in, uh, and then th those operators will support patches. Uh, we might be able to do something for patches before operators as well. Uh, so like a, a client side, COPS client side patch. Um, but yeah, it's at least 115, 116, but that isn't necessarily that far away um, because we should soon, the intent is that we, we did uh, one, we did 113 beta this week, uh, 114 alpha, so when we want to get, we want to try to catch up. I don't think we're gonna catch up with 115. We want to get to the point where we have the 115 alpha out at the same time as, as 115 releases. I don't know if we'll hit that, but we're not gonna be too far off. So it, it isn't too far, although 115 feels like a long way away, if you think about COPS time, it isn't actually that far away from uh, something you can actually run at, at the alpha or beta level, hopefully. But you are welcome to, uh, <laughs> to help. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mentioned shortly earlier, uh, has there been any thought about other container runtimes in Docker? Because I. I've been looking at it, but as far as I know, it's a long-standing issue, but there's not much talk about it. So is, it, is there interest in it? Is there, yeah. Yeah, who, who would like to run uh, like Containerd, for example? Hands up. <laughs> who would like to run, what are the other ones? Uh, 
Cryo as well? OK. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it definitely is. Uh, I think we should do support for ContainerD pretty fast. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, we do, that we benefit from, is when GKE, for example, ships uh, something, then they put a lot of testing into it. Uh, GKE have recently shipped uh, ContainerD. Um, I don't know if it's technically the default yet. Uh, I probably should know that, but I don't know that. Um, but uh, I think we should definitely turn on ContainerD. ContainerD has a lot of advantages as well in terms of uh, image proxying, which I think is really nice. Um, we certainly want to get away from the scenario which we've had to date where the Docker builds are, are locked into the COPS binary. I, and I think we talked about this yesterday. It might have been in SIGATWS, ironically, but uh, the idea of putting them into the bundle. Um, but I, I do think we should get ContainerD going. And I think if anyone wanted to support ContainerD, that would be a wonderful PR. It's, uh, it's not too hard to, to, to swap out Docker for ContainerD. There's actually, they're actually pretty compatible. I think Docker is technically in some way using ContainerD under the covers. So but yeah, I think that would be, be great. I can't imagine anyone here disagrees with the idea that they would love to see you write ContainerD support. But no, if you don't, I will also do it. It's, it would be great. Yeah, and we definitely want to kind of move beyond the, the, you know, previously we basically said, well, this is the version of Docker you're going to get because of that's the version of Kubernetes was validated against, right? Um, but I think we all saw the exact same version of Docker ship for like three or four versions of Kubernetes, and you know, there's vers there's reasons you might want to upgrade a version of Docker and and say, okay, I'm willing to take on the risk of of a non-validated version because I can run the conformance tests or I run production workloads. That's kind of good enough, you know? Um, so, you know, uh, we definitely want to allow that going forward and, and bundles is kind of the right option for us to make sure that it's configurable, but yet uh, we can, you know, we can recommend the best options. Yeah, the default should always be the, the tested option. Exactly. But, but we could let you, a lot of people I think had requests for the, was it compound builder or the, the builder, some of the builder options that they wanted to use the newer versions of Docker for. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I think that upgrades are very painful. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so can you tell me a bit about the plans on trying to make it less painful? Because I hope that's part of the cloud. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, there, was, there's a, there was a particularly painful upgrade with the etcd migration. Um, and hopefully that is a one-off. I think we, we sort of learned as a community that uh, we should avoid upgrades that are that bad in the future. Uh, we should push back at, like, on the underlying pieces if, if that happens, because it really like, had a ripple effect all throughout the ecosystem, I guess. Uh, the hope is that uh, bundles will allow a common specification for what goes into a new uh, a new release of Kubernetes that is more than just Kubernetes itself. So currently, COPS is maintaining that. And it's not clear that SIG release is going to end up owning this piece. But hopefully, there will be a group that is bigger than just us that will like, validate bigger pieces of this. The idea of operators is to give some, like right now, sort of a COPS upgrade is sort of fire and forget. Like we update the, we update the launch template or the, the, the specs, and then, we, and then we, uh, we also update some manifests on disk, but we don't really check that it worked. Um, and so like if Kubernetes starts crash looping, for example, we don't have any way to recover from that. Uh, operators do allow us to recover from that scenario. They would say, oh, I, I went and upgraded Kubernetes, but it started crash looping, and so I will back out that upgrade automatically. Um, that should help. I don't know if you can think of any other things we could be doing better than that. Was there a specific thing that you ran into? Um, I mean, right now, it's the master upgrades that you need to do a lot of special cases for and not timing it out, and the nodes losing contact to the masters. Uh, so you cannot really do just a rolling upgrade and be happy with it. You need to do a lot of special cases in order for it to have continuous uptime. What sort of, I, we, that sounds like a bug. Uh, I think it is that the masters don't uh, uh, remove themselves from the endpoint quickly enough. So we have to manually remove them when we do a rolling upgrade. So they stay before they time out. They don't time out quickly enough. OK. That sounds like a, yeah. If, if you are able to, it would be great to have an issue on that, because it sounds like, that sounds like a bug. Uh, it sounds like something I, hopefully we could do something about. Yeah. Um, and I think 
I think uh, someone hit something vaguely related where like uh, they did a restore in from etcd and they saw a weird uh, where are you anyway. it's right there there you are Done. where so maybe it's related to uh, that was a that was a more serious or that was a, a downtime type bug uh, where they did a restore from etcd so it sounds like this bug might actually be very serious so that's well it, 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 it's it yes <laughs> but it sounds like it also might have a more serious uh, case so that would be it would be great to get details from from both of you Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm curious about the details about the uh, integration with Cluster API. So my understanding is that at the moment, COPS is adopting the, the machine API from the Cluster API. <laughs> and so uh, you mentioned machine deployments, machine sets, machines. So does it mean that COPS is running the machine deployment and machine set controllers from AppStream and the AWS actuator from AppStream, or is it running custom implementations for those? Or? Uh, we are running the, so the, the, the PR that is up there right now is only for GCP at the moment. Um, and it's, it was very, it's very narrow in its uh, scope. It is on an existing cluster. You can add another instance group as a CRD that is backed by machine deployment. So you can't do masters, for example, you can't bring up a new cluster yet. I, I don't know, and I don't think you can bring up a COPS cluster without any instance groups today, any node instance groups today. Uh, so you have to have some that are sort of the, the COPS way and some that are the machine controller way. Um, we use the open source uh, cluster API uh, provider, which is the machine deployment controller and the machine set controller. Uh, we use currently the open source cluster API provider GCP controller, except that uh, we have patched uh, some, we've added some extra support to it. So for example, um, it didn't support specification of, of subnets in the open source version. And so there are probably a dozen PRs out against to add the missing support. But the hope is that yes, we will be able to use it, uh, the, the unmodified open source version. The big change we had to make was to allow uh, the cop, it was to allow the machine to specify the boot up script. So if you don't specify a boot up script, uh, by default it goes, it goes and uses uh, kubeadm and assumes like a kubeadm cluster and it's sort of a much more narrow set of functionality than we need to support. Uh, but if we're able to override the boot up script, then we can essentially call into the cops boot up script. So we, we changed the cluster API provider, cluster API provider, we have PR'd the cluster API provider GCP to say if a boot up script is present, then honor that boot up script and don't write in your own boot up script. Hopefully we can use that same approach everywhere and yeah. So the, the intention, yes, it, it, is, it is an open question though in cluster API, like how are we going to have a cluster, a per cloud provider, cluster API provider X support like Kubatom, Kubatom and uh, COPS node up and other bring up tooling. Um, I think this approach is a possible way to do it. Uh, the downside is that you have this big, ugly, relatively big, ugly script now in your machines. So it's, it's harder to imagine how you would create a machine deployment from scratch today. We'd probably have to go in and like populate the script in there if, if it's a COPS cluster. It's not ideal, but we can, that's one of the things that I think, you know, cluster API, I don't know how many of you were in the talk just now, but cluster API is an ongoing thing. It just did V1 alpha one. And it is still very much an alpha product. And I, I, I'm actually very optimistic that uh, getting it into COPS will help everyone. Like, it will help us adopt it, and it will help them, like, have a real use case for, for adoption. And if you haven't been following uh, a lot of the cluster API stuff, because I, I'll be honest, that, you know, a, a while ago, I was like, oh, there's a lot of stuff going on there, you know? And they, it's a busy, busy discussion topic. Um, but one of the specific UK use cases that we were talking about that would be awesome, and we've gotten lots of requests from the community on, is uh, the idea of the, the deployments. So remember when, when replication controllers switched over and deployments became like the big push in the Kubernetes world, where when uh, you deploy a new version of an application, a replicate, replica, replication, replica set, replica set uh, is a new replica set is created and you scale up and scale down, right? Um, imagine the same things with your auto scaling groups. So you make a change, you we create a new auto scaling group underneath, scale up, scale down. You know, one of the classic problems that a lot of people run into is, you know, they want to roll over their instance groups and cops. And now, you know, in theory, as we go along this path, we can, we can make that happen without having to do a lot of the legwork ourselves. 
and we should get surge and parallel upgrades, which is yes. going to make everyone's uh, rolling updates I think we have one much here. faster. Hi. Uh, thank you for the uh, Q&A session here. And um, there was recently a larger outage of the Quai IO um, registry, and we ran into some issues with starting up clusters and scaling clusters. And is there a way to somehow mirror the images that are pulled or put them on one red registry? I think they are currently spread to QIIO, GCR, and uh, yeah, different ones. So you were saying that you actually had a, uh, an issue pulling from one registry, that it was overloaded? or The QIIO the, the Quai call as registry was down for several, I think, for more than an hour. And that fell into time where we scaled and where, where we created new clusters. And um, yeah, stuff was just not coming up. And we would like to mirror the images into our registry. Yes. So there, there is uh, initial support for mirroring of, uh, of images. I don't know if it works, to be honest. Um, it, uh, but it, we, we have a lot of the hooks in there to rewrite the images. So we, you would be able to do that. It could use some, certainly some testing and some love. And if you want to do that, that would be, if you want to try it out, that would be great. Uh, I'm not even sure you actually can try it out right now. I'm not sure we've done, like, how much we've really done. Um, this is one where ContainerD really unlocks a lot of potential here. So ContainerD lets you set uh, a mirror for any, uh, any host, I guess, or any registry. So you can set a, a mirror for, K, for KIO. Key IO, yeah. Uh, the, um, which would then be your local one. Uh, or I don't know if it supports an S3 bucket as the, as the back end, but you could have it your own mirror. Um, Docker does not allow you to do that for reasons that are unclear. Um, but ContainerD does allow you to do that. Today, the ContainerD code will always fall back to the key.io, key uh, like canonical source. Um, which some people maybe don't want, but I think we could, if that's a problem for people, we could probably address that. But you could certainly have, for the availability case, you could certainly address, you could certainly have additional mirrors that, that can cache and uh, preload those. And I know that I've heard from a few people at this KubeCon alone even talking about that, that you know, they're running cross-region and they just would rather not be pulling it from a separate region and all that stuff. So there's definitely a lot of people out there that share similar problems. And you know we can't always solve all of them right away, um, but if we can try to like pull everyone together and see like who the the core people are, then let's come up with a plan and, and let's get it implemented. So um, I think that's definitely one thing that that we can we can put on the you know the list for you know one fifteen one sixteen is to really hit on some of those those things that would really just make usability for for new users or and existing users um, much easier. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, great, everything. Um, <laughs> did you do you consider uh, adding the DNS cache uh, maybe sooner than the 113? Because that's one also of nothing to do with cops this time. So <laughs> this, just time. this time I like that. <laughs> no, no, for once. Nothing. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. and, yeah. We all know that it's not easy, right? So. Uh, but this could be could really really uh, you know ease the uh, the pain of the uh, all the UDP uh, DNS stuff that we regular. Um, so I was wondering maybe uh, we, you could add uh, some support in the one one twelve. Or yeah, okay. I, I agree. We should uh, we should we should do that. We should we should support it. Uh, yeah. Technically, we have now released one twelve and one third. Oh. One, we have one thirteen beta, so we don't want to add features to that. Is it a bug fix? Is it a feature? Uh, yes. Um, I, I think we should start by getting it into the master, and then we can debate how far back to cherry pick it. I think that's Agreed. the right way to do it. I think we absolutely should do that. Um, and certainly, any if once we get it into master, I think we should cherry pick it to any release where we're not, we don't feel like we can't. And then if we can go further back, that would be great. Um, if it's a purely additive flag, there's much more of a case for like arguing that it's safe. But at the same time, like Kubernetes itself has struggled with uh, like arguing that something is safe and then cherry picking it back and discovering that maybe it wasn't quite as safe as they thought. So uh, 
it's, it's a delicate balance, and it's, uh, it's sometimes worth holding the line just to avoid the temptation, because everyone wants, everyone wants it, right? And it would be great, but let's start by getting it into master. And it's, it's actually great, if anyone wants to contribute, this is another great one, the, uh, the essentially mirroring what is done in the, I guess still the cube up scripts, the cluster directory. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to change the DNS IP. But other than that, it's just a daemon set that you install. And it would be a, a great feature that would be greatly appreciated by lots of people, including myself. Um, yeah, and, and I agree. And this is, this is one of those things that we will often hit in, like, in our office hours, where someone will say, OK, you know, we want to get this feature in. It's like, OK, well, let's make sure the code works and it's, you know, we get it merged into master. And then we kind of bring it to the room and, you know, in office hours. And we'll say, OK, we've heard a lot of you. you know, a lot of people want this. What risk are we willing to take on? You know? uh, and so maybe at that point, once, once the code's in, then we can have that discussion and say, well, do we want to say maybe there's alpha support in, in another version and we cherry pick? I'm not committing to that at all. I'm just saying, you know, we, we can make that commitment and say, well, if you guys, you know, if, if everyone really wants to test this, you can, but it's not, you know, but I, I'm very hesitant to say that because as Justin was saying, we like to say that, you know, the beta and alphas, you know, are feature full and we try not to add features the best we can. But, you know, as, as we were also talking about earlier, we also, it's, it's a fine line, right? Because, like, we want to make sure we can eventually get 115 out the door. So maybe that's the motivation. Maybe we just leave it in 115, and we're just like, okay, let's get 113, and then 114, and, you know, um, that way we speed up the train. So it's, it's a fine, ba fine balance. Uh, but I will admit, I also would love that. <laughs> I've run into that for years. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you all so much for your questions. I think we're the last thing standing between you and lunch. So if there are more topics to discuss, let's come to the front. But otherwise, thank you all and uh, enjoy your lunch, I think. Yeah, thank you.